Hi, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are joining us from. Thank you all for uh, registering and participating in US Team Foundation's November webinar. This is the last of our November webinar series, and I'm very excited that we are going to be talking about preventing caregiver burnout, tips for caring for the caregiver. My name is Shanna Smith, and I'm going to be your moderator for today. We'll begin the program shortly. I just wanted to let you all know that you do have a control panel that should be on your screen or on your cell phones and with that you do have the ability to ask any questions using the questions pane you'll see a little button there that says questions you'll just type in um, your inquiry and click send and at the end of today's presentation we will have a brief question and answer session and we'll take as many questions as we do have time for uh, I do want to let you know that if you're experiencing at any time technical difficulties either with the audio or, or visual of this program please submit those issues within the questions pane as well and with that I'd like to introduce our guest speaker Marianne St. Clair and she is your go-to expert on burnout. She inspires burnout women to come alive to a new vibe by introducing them to savvy tools, successful strategies, and eye-opening perspectives that allow women to reclaim their feminine power, revive their youthful radiance, enthusiasm for life, and unleash their hidden potential. Marianne, I will hand it over to you now to start today's presentation. Thank you, Shana. Well, welcome everyone. My name again is Marianne St. Clair. And as you can see on the screen, there's my little buddy, Turtle. And I'm all about from burnout to bliss and doing that through pleasure and play. So as you can see here a picture of me, we're going to talk about preventing caregiver burnout and tips for the caring caregiver. So I want us to begin kind of with a little overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Who am I? Who's Marianne? And what are my qualifications? We're also going to look at my journey as a caregiver. And I spent quite a few years doing that and still doing that. And um, how to recognize burnout, the impact burnout has on the caregiver and on the caregiver's mental and physical health. Plus, we're going to look at um, what's play and pleasure got to do with it. So um, as you can see here in these photos, um, you know, the ones on the left show me in my worst um, years of burnout, and the one on the right you can see what a difference, you know, the journey out of burnout to bliss, what a difference it can make. So pictures are worth a thousand words, and I just thought I would uh, show you what is possible. So here is my family. Um, some of you on this call might know me personally, but there's plenty of people who don't. I am 55 years old and actually 56 now, just had a birthday in November. But the the one on the left is my older daughter. She's now 25. And the one in the back is my daughter, Layla, and my little grandson, Levi. And just because you cannot see it does not mean it's not there. There's my daughter, um, Danielle, has rare diseases and pain. She has um, Ehlers-Danlos. She has complex regional pain, which is a, you know, a nervous, central nervous um, condition that affects her autonomic system, her digestive system. And the Ehlers-Danlos has you know, it affects the connective tissue and causes the mast cell disorder. So you can't see it because they're invisible illnesses. They, you know, are in the body and in the mental and emotional health. They affect the mental and emotional health. But, um, you know, you can't visibly see them on the outside except for when she's writhing in pain, you can begin to notice there's something going on back there. Layla also um, 
has the connective tissue and the autonomic conditions, but what we've learned through Danielle, it hasn't progressed the way that Danielle's did because we didn't know. And then now through Levi, he's showing similar symptoms. He's got um, some autonomic things going on, and he also has some sensory. So many times, these issues get passed from generation to generation, and we're learning so much more about them that when we look back in my family, we noticed in my mother's side, we noticed that her aunt and her grandfather had these same issues, but they did not know what to call them. So, you know, there's, there's many different things that have affected our journey and my journey as a caregiver. I did not, you know, wasn't aware one day that it would change. And it did. It all of a sudden, you know, on one day, my older daughter's father got um, killed in a car accident. And when that happened, she also hurt her knee. And so her autonomic nervous system went into hyperdrive. And she began raging in pain. And I did not know that that was going to be part of the beginning of my journey as a caregiver. Now, I was already a caregiver. We, anybody who has kids, you're a caregiver. You're, you're caring for your you know, newborn baby. And so this doesn't have to be just due to illnesses. It can be that you're caring for a, an elderly parent. It can be that you're also caring for your, your children and your elderly parent. So, you know, I don't want to speak into just because we have, um, that I'm caring for someone with invisible illnesses. There's also, you know, caregiving for elderly and our children, our, our young kids. So I poured my heart and soul into looking for answers. I became, you know, just trying to love my daughter and trying to help her get better. And then, you know, part of the problem with that was, you know, I couldn't work as hard as I was before. I couldn't work as many hours. I had to spend my time in hospitals sitting there, um, you know, trying to, she was only 14 at that time. So I had a minor, so I couldn't just you know, leave her at the hospital and go off and go to work. I had to cut my work schedule way back and, you know, be there to support um, myself. So I couldn't afford health insurance for myself. And with that, you know, came, you know, my own health declining. I didn't, wasn't able to get, you know, go to, doctors and go to um, get emotional support for myself by going to a counselor. So that plays into this spiral that really starts happening. Um, you know, I, I put more of my attention on everybody else. I put more of my attention on trying to help my daughter. So my self-care lacked. Um, I didn't have time or the resources or money to go on vacations or to and, and my attention wasn't there. My attention was more on trying to solve the problem than, you know, trying to take care of my immediate needs and my own well-being. So, and then dealing with the medical establishment and who thought I was part of the problem. So there was always this fight and flight that was going on inside of me because I was trying to seek out their help trying to help my daughter, and then the, the people that I was trying to get help from was turning back and making it, you know, so there was this loop, this really fight and flight loop that was going on. And then I was becoming the researcher, along with other parents that I was in the group with, and then, you know, on the internet and trying to find and solve the problem of 
where I could take her for care, I became a researcher. So all of that led to my energy being very low, very tanked, and depleted. So even as a life coach that I am, you think, you go, okay, well, you know, you have all these tools and resources. You should have been able to pull yourself out and known this. Well, let me tell you, the main people that are in burnout in our society today are the caregivers, the, the life coaches, the physicians, the nurses, the psychologists, the massage therapists are very susceptible to burnout because we're caring for, we have such a huge heart and we care and have a lot of compassion and we're trying to help other people. So a lot of times, you know, that can spiral into, um, a lot of, you know, negative things for our own well-being. Um, but, you know, our our whole world right now is leaning so much towards burnout because we're, we're going, going, going and trying to, we're not managing our own energy resources. So let me tell you a little bit about my professional career and why I, I'm able to understand this from more of a holistic um, perspective and a multidisciplinary perspective is because that helps me as a life coach and helps me to understand, you know, how to help, you know, other people. So I spent um, two years learning from the hardest person in the country who trained NASA scientists how to be a personal trainer. And what that did was really helped me to understand the mechanics of the body and the anatomy. Um, and so, you know, I understand neuroscience and how the, the mind affects the body and how, you know, our emotions and what it triggers in our um, autonomic system and also how it affects all of our organs so the massage therapy gave me an understanding of that mind-body-spirit connection, how the energy moves through the body, how the meridians are very important because they connect to all the organs, how the environment and the toxins affect our body. And then as an artist, um, you'll see later on in one of my paintings that will be behind us, but as an artist, it really helped me to to understand, you know, creating new things and how wonderful things, uh, how beauty is always around us and how we can change our environment and, and learn how to appreciate life. And then as a photographer, it assists me in seeing the beauty around me and the world from completely new perspectives. And that's what I try to look, you know, now and, and help my clients to see and, and just people is how to see your world anew, like with childlike eyes, how to gain a new perspective. Even if you're as a caregiver, you know, you can see your world in a different way. So let me, so any, some people on this, this, webinar will know this guy. He's um, a doctor in Rhode Island named Pradeep Chopra. And to me, he's the, this is the true caregiver's message. He said to me when I first met him eight years ago, um, he said, Marianne, he said, and I say she here, Danielle is just as much my daughter as she is yours. And it is our job to show her love and compassion. And, and with that message, you know, here's the journey, eight years, and they just saw each other again. But in this message, I want you to know that you have to have love and compassion for yourself, not just, you know, you have to love yourself through this journey. So let's take and dive into burnout. What is burnout? Well, there are two definitions that the medical community and um, what we use 
to define burnout, but it's still in infancy, really, in understanding what to do about it and where to, you know, what what really is the difference between um, stress and burnout. So let me give you just a little, let me read these, and we're going to go on and get into a little bit more. But the two important definitions are a state of physical, emotional, mental exhaustion caused by a long-term involvement in an emotionally demanding situation. Now, that can be work, that can be home, that can be um, here we're using the, you know, the caregiving. So the other definition is a state of fatigue or frustration brought, on, brought about by devotion to a cause, way of life, or relationship that failed to produce an expected reward. The expected reward for me was that I would be able to help my daughter and I would be able to help her to resume the life she had before. And so I had this expectation. And I don't know if any of you can appreciate that or kind of dealing with, you know, your caregiving. So I'd like to share with you that there is a difference between stress and burnout. And just like the zebra here and the horse, and many of you in the Ellers Danlos community can appreciate this, but the the horse and the zebra carry a lot of carry characteristics that are the same, just like stress and burnout do. But Stress generally happens really quickly. All of a sudden you get sick or you have, um, you know, you get fired from a job or you burn yourself on the stove and that stress happens quickly and generally it goes away. But burnout is a gradual process. It happens and it happens, the stress continues and it's a process. It continues over a period of time. So what causes caregiver burnout? Many times <clears throat> the caregiver finds themselves unintentionally playing the role of a professional caregiver. They didn't sign up for it. They didn't know that all of a sudden their life was going to change and they were going to need to balance their life between caregiving and spouse and caregiving or a friend, but all of a sudden they're, they're shoved into this role and they're juggling their family, their doctor's appointments for their kids, trying to work, run errands, cleaning, bills, bills, and more bills. There's just so much dumped on top of them, a caregiver, that they, they, they continue to get their energy depleted. And they have a lack of control of what's happening in their world. Um, you know, they, they, they don't know how to fix it or, you know, how to juggle all their different roles. So as much as they try to control it, they can't. So here's a slide that many of you probably will be like I was. Just, oh, my gosh. Um, there's an estimated 44 million American caregivers to adults or adults with disabilities. Now, this isn't even take into account the number that are caring for children with disabilities or caring for children. But it's a $306 billion, and this was a couple of years ago. So the number's probably up to 500 billion dollars of unpaid labor in the United States. Caregivers, I only know, I knew one of the women in our group who was able to be paid for her caregiving out in the state of Washington. But I live in Florida and it doesn't matter. If you're caregiving in the state of Florida for adults or your adult children or you don't get any kind of compensation. 
Um, so it's a, it's a huge um, drain on our family resources. You know, we're trying to, to take on all of this work and we're not being paid for it. Um, the other thing that causes a lot of exhaustion is the health issues that start creeping up for the caregiver. You know, you start looking at, I had hypertension, um, which then can, you know, roll into di weight gain and diabetes and then autoimmune diseases. So there's a lot of health issues that begin to creep up because your energy is so low and you're so exhausted. The healthcare system creates additional burdens because, you know, there's increased cost and responsibilities, like I just said a few minutes ago. And then the other one is that lack of insurance, like I didn't have. Um, so there's, you know, just a lot of reasons that to question. This slide I put in there because at one point in my journey, I was so low. and Stress-related illnesses can become that thing that you really need to reach out and get help. Um, you can get to the point where you are in depression or, you know, you have that persistent not happy. And it's not that you want to go, you know, commit suicide, but, oh, you get so low that you just don't know. So I put this in here because I really feel strongly that picking up the phone and calling somebody, if you don't have a friend to call, you need to reach out and, and call a crisis hotline and make sure that you get out there. Happy over time. I never heard of the work. I didn't know that there was, I just thought, I'm not depressed. My life wasn't bad. But I just couldn't figure out how to get my life in a where everything felt good. I, it was there was just this low feeling that I couldn't get out. And it's like you know, many of you, I'm sure you've heard that old saying, you know, you, the you put a frog in a pot and you turn up the the heat slowly, you know the frog will die, but if you just throw it into a hot pot, it's going to jump right out. Well, that's what happens to our sympathetic nervous system. We live in a fight and flight state most of the time. So living in that fight and flight state, we are, we are the frog. You know, all the time, our life goes from bad to worse. Every day becomes a bad day. Caring, you know, about your work and your home life becomes a burden. You just don't want one more thing. You know, you're stressed out all the time. The majority of your life is spent, you know, on tasks that you find dull, you know, or overwhelming. You know, you just, let me just go pull the covers over my head and go hide because I just can't take on one more thing. And you feel like you're not appreciated, you know, that that what you've done is, is just overlooked. Nobody, you know, it's a thankless job. So you just feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't do this anymore. Without me. I used to say this and I go, well, what about me here? When am I going to feel happy? When am I going to be able to do something I want to do? When am I going to, when is, when is life going to change? And I used to, I'm not happy about this and, but I don't, I know some of you can probably appreciate it. I used to like blame my daughter and I used to say, when you get better, I'll get my life back. And so what that did was, it put a burden on my daughter, and then she carried a lot of hidden guilt because she was sick. She was she couldn't help herself from being sick, but I was in burnout. It's not something that 
she or I at that time knew or had the awareness of how we were going to get out of this. Um, so caregivers a lot of times don't pri prioritize their own emotional, physical, health, mental needs over the person they're caring for. So that what about me, you know, comes into play because they're so focused on outside of themselves rather than looking, what are my immediate needs? What do I need to do? How can I, you know, help myself right now? And so you kind of get that loss of identity, that lower self-esteem, and, you know, that constant worry and feeling of uncertainty. How is life going to It starts showing up in physical symptoms. The caregiver is generally worse in health after becoming the caregiver because they begin to have low energy. They begin to you know, get just depleted. They have trouble sleeping because their autonomic, their sympathetic nervous system is so heightened that it can't shut down. The chemicals are raging in their body and they're ready for fight and flight and they can't just turn that off when they're ready to lay down. It's, it, their, their body's too overstimulated. Pains come up. Headaches because you know, you're always up in your head trying to find the answers and there's all kinds of different reasons that we can have those stress headaches, backaches, backaches, understanding from a massage therapy and chiropractic standpoint, a lot of times you can have backaches because your finances are very weak and you, you feel very drained um, financially as well as you're emotionally bankrupt. Um, Frequent illnesses come up, which caught, you know, from a weakened immune system. So you begin to possibly get autoimmune diseases. You feel drained, nauseous, um, changes in appetite, and a lot of times blurred vision. So some of the other symptoms that, you know, we, we look at last is, you know, feeling trapped defeated and helpless because these emotional and behavior symptoms are just as important to understand in the complexity of burnout as the physical symptoms. But we're used to taking, you know, an over-the-counter medicine or we're used to stuffing it down or trying to find an answer, but we don't listen to those signs that we're seeing um, and we don't even know those signs or symptoms a lot of times, physical symptoms or behavioral, emotional symptoms. So when you start looking at the loss of motivation, you know, the decreased satisfaction or sense of accomplishment, sense of failure, self-doubt, withdrawing from responsibilities and withdrawing from people, going into isolation. I could remember that, you know, sometimes I just wanted to be alone. I didn't have anything else to give anybody, so I just pulled in. So taking out the frustrations on those that you love, yelling or, you know, uh, snapping because, you know, you ha you're just so quick to find fault um, or just snapping out of frustration. Um, coping by using food, alcohol, work, staying at work because you don't want to go home and face what you've got at home. And then an increased sense or, you know, a negative outlook on life or some of those symptoms that you need to be aware of. And if there, you know someone or it's yourself, you need to be aware that possibly they're in burnout. So the problem really isn't you, but the problem is yours. So I love that statement. You know, if somebody had a really um, said that to me, I, I might have, you know, triggered me to to look, you know, that it that I needed to do something. If I was going to get out of burnout in the way I was feeling, I needed to do something more to help myself. So here is one that I'd like to invite you 
to to look at, and that is how to tell your story. I would sometimes want people to know, and I see other parents and I see other people who are caregiving. They want people to know that they're doing all of this work. They're, they're, so they share their story from a victim standpoint, from a suffering standpoint. Like, you know, you just don't even know what I'm going through in my life. You have no idea what it's like to sit in a hospital 246 days and be yelled at by doctors. You know, instead of sharing it from a warrior standpoint, this is what we're doing right now. Life is kind of challenging. Life is, you know, we we have, um, you know, an opportunity to look at this illness and how can we make a difference in our lives and other people's lives and share our, our journey through another way and rewrite how do I want to live my life and I'm telling you this was huge for me when I stopped spiraling in you know the same old story all the time and I said I want to live I want to start having fun I want to start enjoying my days because I would see other parents and they would be going on vacations they would be enjoying life and I would say Instead of what about them, how, you know, I would say, I want to be like them and I'm going to be like them. So what's happening today is not always what's going to happen tomorrow. So I want to give this a little. One year different. And so I want to encourage you that life does not have to stay the same. This is one year difference in my daughter. And this is after that turning point of rewriting both of our stories and rewriting what, how we were going to live life, that life began to change because it's an inside job as much as it is an outside job. It's an inside job to, you know, start feeling joy or feeling happy so you can begin to experience it. So if you want to know more about that, we can get into um, it later at another time. But I want to encourage you to not give up, to know that your life is always changing and it will change. And so there's hope. So here is ways to prevent caregiver burnout. I wish I had have known this. And so here's some of my top tips. You know, set realistic goals for yourself, for your family, um, you know, what you're going to do to, to achieve, um, you know, your day-to-day -day life. Like, you know, if your house needs to be clean, just set a realistic goal on, you know, today I feel like keeping and cleaning the dishes and I want everybody to keep the dishes clean in the sink, you know, rather than gosh, the whole kitchen needs to be cleaned and I don't have any energy to do it. Ask for help. Find, you know, if it isn't your family, because many of us, you know, our family deserts us in the, the caregiver role, but ask friends. There's other people, there's, there's resources in your community but you've got to learn to ask for help. You can't continue to take it all on yourself. There's, there's resources and you've got to find them. Set aside some time for yourself. Know your limits. That's so important. Talk to a counselor or a life coach and get your feelings out. You know, don't bottle them up inside. Develop new tools for coping. Get plenty of rest. Eat rather than um, eat rather, you know, to fuel your body rather than for comfort, um, which we know those comfort foods just put weight on us. So sugars and um, carbohydrates. 
um, accept your feelings, sad, mad, or glad. Don't don't try to you know put them um, stuff them down in and change your story. Sunshine, get out in the sun, sit outside, go for a walk, get out in nature. Make sure that you are getting um, connected with life outside of your immediate surrounding. Look up rather than looking down. What happens when you look up, you're accessing a whole different side of your brain and you're accessing, um, you know, your neurochemistry will change. We're always looking down into our phones. We're looking down when we're sad. If you can just remember to look up and look up to the sky or look up to the ceiling when you're feeling down or even just on a daily basis. Spend more time looking up than looking down. It will raise your self-esteem. It will make you feel better. And then make time for friends and to have fun. Those things can help you. This is something that I feel we all need to kind of put on our, is if we're not reaching out to help one another, if we're not reaching out and asking for help, what are we teaching our kids? What are we teaching, you know, those that we love dearly? Um, we're teaching them that they don't need they don't need help, that they can do it all themselves. So I just want to put this in there, you know, for all of us to model that behavior so that you know, we're all, all, all in this together. So let's reach out to one another. Here's, if you can't take care of yourself, it, if you can't be, you can't be taking care of everyone else if you don't care for yourself. Like that thing we've heard our entire life, at least I have, to put on your oxygen mask first. Well, you know, I was doing it. And so this is just a little reminder that, you know, you have to um, care for yourself. And the recovery, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Part of the, the recovery process to get out of burnout, if you're in burnout, is, um, you know, I, I want to tell you that you will not get out of it by by staying in the same place that you are. You you can't ignore the symptoms. You need to seek assistance and it takes time and space to recuperate. You need to um, you need to, you know, spend time on your recovery. It's a slow journey. It's not a quick dash to an imaginary line. You need assistance and um, make sure you look out, you know, and find whether or not it's a friend or a social worker. Um, there is hope. You can go psychic. And two of my main um, ways that have helped me are through pleasure and play. And at the beginning, I said, what's pleasure got to do with it? Well, let's start. So pleasure, um, pleasureful experiences for me are, you know, filling my life with experiences that make me feel the happiest and the jo most joy. Get out, you know, into doing the things that you did before you were good. Whether or not that's just a walk in nature, but you've got to find those things that help bring joy to your life. Um, that are nature, eating food that is nutrient rich, breathe and meditate, stretch movement, music, and painting was one of my key ones. Painting really helped me to. Um, just get outside of myself and to create, and it's a very um, therapeutic way to recover from burnout. Um, 
simplify declutter and plug for a day, get assistance from a So here's my other one that um, play isn't just for kids. You know, some of the benefits, some of the, the things that, <laughs> this is such a, I've been there. She's She's been me before. But play deprivation is huge for kids, but also for adults. If we are not out um, laughing, enjoying life, um, and in play, we have, you know, that that low um, energetic feeling. So here, this is an, a friend of mine and her daughter, McKenna, and we recently went with U.S. Pain to Disney for the pediatric warrior retreat. And this is what McKenna wrote to me after she went down and played because it gave her respite from stress. She said, I felt like I wasn't alone as I often feel. It was so nice to break away from stress and the medical and the stress of life with medical challenges. She was able to connect which that's what play does. It connects you to others. It helps you to feel better. It helps to bring, you know, some distance between you and your illness. She said, I felt like I had time to recharge and feel like a kid again. So don't they look like they were just having fun? on time. Why play? Because it's so important for humans from birth to death. Play is not just meant for kids, it's meant for all of us. We can tap into our creativity, we connect with others, and we can connect with our inner child. Here's the top um, 12 benefits. It inspires you to think differently. Um, it builds your health and body, builds your immune system. It reduces stress, builds resilience, brings greater joy into your life, teaches you emotional intelligence, improves Problem solving stimulates imagination and curiosity, builds healthy relationships, increases sense of lightness and improves energy. I don't know about you, but pleasure and play can change anyone's life. How does that list of transformations feel if you had the the distance of, I mean, um, if you had the opportunity to feel light and less stress when you take on play. So, let's see here. Oops. Um, replay is one of the fastest ways that I feel um, has can make a transformative effect. Um, you could play. You know, there's no right or wrong. There's you know, art doodling, working on a project, board games, get out biking, trade cars, um, hair and makeup, theater acting. There's so many ways that you can play. And if you make play a priority, you will have plenty of pleasure. So schedule time. Make sure that you are taking time to get out it's not all about the stress and we've got it all wrong we need to get out there and have some fun even watching these kids with their lights on their wheelchairs and their parents pushing them all around Disney it's an adventure to be lived so in closing I hope you've enjoyed it but um, burnout didn't just happen overnight so be kind to yourself reach out if you need help Recovery is slow and all steps over time. Um, you can't just all of a sudden say, okay, I'm going to be out of burnout. Enjoy pleasure and play. It rewires your brain and begins to, your life and your outlook will change. And what's next? Um, you can get involved. You can message me and I'll show you those links here in just a second. And so from burnout to bliss, 
I believe that we all should come alive to a whole new vibe through pleasure and play. So if you'd like to get a hold of me, this is how you can go to Facebook and Marianne St. Clair or my website. And, um, you know, I, if I can help you in any way, make sure that you let me know. So I'm going to turn this over to Tina. Sure. Um, so Marianne, uh, you were just, yes, you were just cutting out a little bit at the, at the end. So um, what Marianne was saying is okay. now we're going to be uh, turning it over to the question and answer uh, portion of this afternoon's program. So if you want to um, ask a question, feel free to type it in and, and we'll pose that to Marianne. I will get us started though. Marianne, thank you so much for breaking down the, the difference between the burnout and stress and also those visuals. I think that they're good um, they're good ways to kind of emphasize exactly what, what it is that you're describing when, when you refer to burnout. Um, are there specific tips which may differ because of the age of the child when you're looking at how you, the caregiver, can overcome burnout, or is the process pretty much the same no matter the age of the person you're caring for? I think it's pretty much the same no matter, you know, the, no matter who, whether or not you're caring for an infant and you're working or you're caring for an elderly person and you're you know, working or you're not working. It doesn't really matter age doesn't play into it. It's your own personal energy stores, your own personal outlook, your own personal health that really starts snowballing and playing into the burnout. Okay. And do you think um, from your experience or hearing from others, can a child sense your frustrations resulting from caregiver burnout, um, maybe frustrations you weren't even aware that you were exhibiting? Oh, absolutely. That's where I, you know, speaking about that my daughter had a lot of guilt because, you know, she felt she that she was the cause of the problem of my burnout, of my, you know, not feeling well. They can sense, you know, because they'll snap more. They can sense that, you know, you're in frustration or you're not feeling good. They have a lot of um, their own you know, turmoil that they're feeling because of your burnout. And does the pediatric pain warrior play a role during the phase when the caregiver has recognized the burnout signs and they're ready to transform from sufferer to worrier and change their and rewrite their story? Does the child play a role in that? Absolutely. The child and the parent can work together. The parent themselves can, you know, set up some tools, but the child themselves has to become a warrior. They, they, they're, times their illness is just going to go away. So they've got to learn their strategies, their tools for how they themselves are going to be able to learn and their coping mechanism. Because the long term, working both together, you know, to become that warrior, to become rewrite the story, it, it's not uh, something that you just do one time. You continually rewrite your story. You continually, you know, use tools on a day to day basis. And now you had um, a great list of things for people to to learn and to practice as they're starting to rewrite their story and kind of change their outlook on the position that they're in as the caregiver. And uh, one of them that you had was setting aside time for yourself. Now, I know some parents may feel that they can't change speeds and set time for themselves, maybe because they feel that uh, maybe their child needs around-the-clock care. So what advice do you have for those caregivers who, who feel like that? You have to take time, whether or not it's five minutes. Five minutes to walk outside and maybe just touch the grass you know, the warmth of the sun on their skin. Little small steps. Um, take out some paint. Go, maybe you can't go to the, you know, the paint thing with the wine and everything, but maybe you can sit down on the floor and get some paints and just move them or doodle a picture. 
you can also pull up music. Music is transformative. You know, you can put on something that's relaxing and look at some meditation um, things on YouTube. You just need to find the things that are going to help rebuild your energy. I call them energy additives. Um, so those can happen in five-minute increments. So you can set a timer on your phone and begin to, when that timer goes off, well, an hour, take five minutes and reboot yourself to reach, plug your energy from uh, all the things that, you know, it's plugged into and just focus on you. Now, someone uh, speaking of the same, uh, you know, issue of setting aside time for themselves, Johanna says, um, or wants to know if you can suggest wording for how you explain to your kids or young teens, for example, that you need some time, even just for a cup of tea, um, to yourself without making them feel guilty, but also enforcing to the children that, that you need that time. And she gives the example that her kids do tend to wander into her room or get into her space during her time. And then she ends up, you know, getting annoyed to the point where, where she might snap at them unintentionally. We tend to do that in burnout quickly. Our response is to snap versus, you know, asking, you know, hey, you know, can you give me five minutes? We're like, get out of here, hurry up, go. You know, so we need to learn to have healthy boundaries. And that we have to teach those around us how to respect our time. And we have to respect ourselves first and foremost, before the others around us will begin to respect us. So beginning to lower your voice, come from a place of, you know, power in, in asking, setting clear boundaries, beginning to um, showing them over time how five minutes, you know, will make a world of a difference when you come back out of the room and if they continue to come in and you continue to yell, you know, showing them the, the reaction, um, you know, in a clear example versus, you know, something, the main thing I want to do is lead by example rather than, you know, just giving them, um, yelling at them. Don't learn by that. You have to lead by example and set that boundary, clear boundaries, and then, you know, sh show them how you can change. Right. And I think that comes with practice because, you know, depending on the age of the child and depending on the child, they may respond differently to different ways that you're phrasing the words. So um, I may start off, for example, with a very um, calm and collective uh tone and say politely to my son, you know, mommy needs a few minutes. Can, can you let mom lay down just for five minutes and then we can go do this. So he knows that there is a reward coming if he lets me do that. And then if he disrupts during that, I'll say, Linda, mommy needed time. If I don't have this time, then we won't be able to do this. Um, so I think it, for, for some people that may, that approach may work. It may not. Um, but that's what I found works for me. Yeah, there's, there's different strategies, and you've got to know your child. You know, you, there's time out if they don't. Uh, you know, and mommy needs a time out right now. They understand time out, whereas, you know, mm -hmm. the difference in, in I had to ask everybody to leave the house while I did this webinar. And, you know, it's, it's setting those clear boundaries, and we have to enforce them. We have to learn to be able to ask, you know, sometimes we just yell. And sometimes it's after the fact rather than setting things up ahead of time. Mom's going to take five minutes, you know, I'm going to set you out these toys and I'm going to get them set out. You know, in 10 minutes from now, mom going to relax and take five minutes. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to set those, the the pathway ahead of time instead of just I gotta go, you know, which a lot of times we wait till we are beyond our limit, and that's when we begin to yell 
rather than setting ourselves up to have this time. Right. And how can you get other family members to understand, you know, what the caregiver may be going through? Because I think so many, and we hear this question from a lot of people and and the attendee raises a good point, you know, that a lot of people just don't understand um, the support that they, that they may need as the caregiver. You know, if I really need that, I could bottle it up and I could, I could probably be a multimillionaire. Um, People have different, um, there, a lot of times family members have their own stuff going on in their own lives and they just can't hear. They don't understand what a person is going through. And I think, um, it's really key to find support from whoever you need to. And it may not be your immediate family. It may not be your parents or grandparents or, you know, they just, we're living in a world today that is so different and burnout is an epidemic. It's it's hitting across the board. I just read an article on millennials are hitting burnout really fast. And I think it's because of our society and how we've been taught to go, 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 go. And, you know, not tend to listen to our bodies. And so it's really difficult to answer that question on how you can make people understand what you're going through. Only thing I can say is just come from your heart and just let them know that, you know, you really do need a little support and you are going through something different than just, um, you know, needing five minutes, you need them, you know, I think everybody should learn to give to one another. You know, what, what is it like to offer to a girlfriend to babysit her kids so she can maybe go get it? Maybe she doesn't have the money or resources to, you know, go, um, out for the evening because she'd have to pay a babysitter you know, what would it be like to start cooperatives and be able to share with one another, you know, resources because we're just all so limited in our resources and our own energy and our bodies. So, you know, just when you do have the ability to reach out, when you see somebody that's, you know, going through, a parent who's going through too much, and I know we talk about moms, but dads are, Dads are going through a lot, too. They're trying to keep the bills paid and the lights on, and they're also caregiving. That we we just all have to reach out to one another and love one another because it, we're all going through quite a bit in society these days. No, that's great. Uh, and that was from Casey, who says hello, and she thanks you so much for uh, joining the program today. Um, hey, Casey. <laughs> we have another question from Michelle. Um, so she's an adult, actually, with chronic pain, and she relied on her mom as her primary caregiver. And seeing that now she needs to take care of herself, but the mom says she can't because she has no time or no one else is going to do what she needs to, is there anything Michelle can say to her mom to get her to realize that she really needs to start taking care of herself? Um, she could... One, get her to listen to this presentation because there's maybe a lot of things. Um, you know, I hear that from doctors and I hear that from other people that there's nobody can do what I do, so I can't stop now. We get in this cycle that the whole world is going to blow up if we don't continue to do what we're doing. And that's part of the, the cycle of burnout. So maybe what you could do, you know, is just, maybe do something for her. You know, maybe it's little ra- random acts of kindness that you could do. I love it when, you know, m- when my girls would take and do the dishes or um, even give me a shoulder massage. You know, there's just little things that you could do to extend, you know, some some love and and taking care of her for a change that might you know just boost her up a little bit 
but you could, you know, share this with her. You could just talk to her and say, you know, mom, I, I realize that you might be experiencing, you know, more than what you think you are, or I know that you're trying to take care of me, but you can't if you don't take care of yourself. You know, nobody's good to anybody else if they, if they're not, you know, taking care of themselves. So just encourage her. She can also go to my website um, and schedule a call free, and I'll be more than happy to, you know, share my experience from a, being a mom and how I had to let go of those reins. I had to set them down. I had to take care of me or I wouldn't be here for my kids. Now we're talking a lot. Thank you so much for, for that insight. I think, um, you know, we're talking about moms and, and some families, um, there may be more than one caregiver in the home to take care of the child. Um, and mm -hmm. can you talk a, a little bit about that dynamic? Because I think that there is definitely the opportunity to make the most of that extra set of hands, eyes and ears. Um, but sometimes you may unintentionally either overstep some boundaries or maybe you're not contributing enough. Can you talk a little bit about when there's two caregivers in the home? Yeah, I think, you know, one thing that we do is we think that we have the right way. We have all the answers. We need to do it our way. That's part of that control piece. And, you know, sometimes you just have to know that the other person might have some good ideas. They may have. And, you know, it's, you're so blessed when you do have extra hands. Um, it's good to go take care of yourself and turn over the reins to somebody else. It's also good to have communication. Communication is key between two caregivers, understanding what their roles are, kind of laying out the roles. I'm going to take care of this while you go do that. I'm going to take care of, you know, paying the bills while you take care of calling the doctors. You know, we have to open up lines of communication and not assume, you know, in the past conversation, you asked me in that question about, you know, how we could convey to um, other people our needs as a caregiver. Well, communicating and being able to tell somebody and ask for help rather than think that everybody should know what we need. That we do a lot. We want to stomp our feet like we're three years old and say, you know, I need this. But we could have just opened up and said, hey, can you go get me that? Um, so I think communicating, having new forms of communication, opening up, you know, how we can understand one another and what somebody else might be going through in the house is key. Um, does that answer it? Or? Yes. No, that does. Yeah. Okay, good. That does. Um, and we are um, at about that time, Marianne. Um, no one else has um, has posed questions, but we had some great ones come in. So, so thank you for the attendees for participating and for joining us. Marianne, thank you so much for taking some time and sharing your um, professional experiences, your personal experiences, uh, for sharing you know that journey with especially with your daughters. I think that was a uh, very empowering and inspiring for other people to, to understand and recognize exactly what burnout is and maybe some coping mechanisms and ways that they can start really taking back some, some uh, control over their lives. So thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I put back on the screen, if anybody wants to write that down real quick, I'm available. Uh, you know, burnout is horrible. <laughs> it's, it's just, and if I can help in any way, anybody, or you need just somebody to talk to, I'm here. Oh, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And this webinar um, has been recorded. So um, once it is uh, finished, we will have the recording available. You can grab the link either in our upcoming newsletter or on our website, which does 
house a lot of our webinar recordings and share it with others who you think might truly benefit um, from this presentation on caring for the caregiver. Thanks everyone so much and I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and try and utilize maybe one of those tips today. Thanks, Marianne. Thank you. Bye, Shana. Goodbye. Take care.